You are about to visit Asian American painter Pasita Abad's colorful studio home in tropical Singapore. Pasita lived and painted here during the last five years of her life with her husband Jack. Pasita Abad, one of Asia's foremost contemporary painters, passed away in 2004 at the age of 58. Her early death brought an abrupt end to a prolific artistic career that saw her create almost 5,000 artworks, including a 55-meter bridge which she covered with more than 2,000 colorful circles. Her painting was characterized by constant change, development, and exploration. She first studied painting in the United States and then spent the rest of her artistic career painting, working, and traveling in more than 80 countries. Pasita's travels to exotic destinations had a major impact on her art and were the inspiration for many ideas, techniques, and materials used in her vibrantly bold and colorful paintings. A truly global artist, Pasita had more than 40 solo exhibitions at museums and galleries in the United States, Asia, Europe, Africa, and Latin America. Her work is now in public, corporate, and private art collections in over 70 countries. Pasita's studio is situated on the side of Mount Faber, surrounded by dense jungle, flowers, and trees full of exotic, colorful birds. The long and winding driveway up to the studio is bordered by tropical plants and flowers which the artist planted. Birds of paradise, heliconias, orchids, alamandas, and red ginger were among her favorite flowers. The path to Pasita's studio is also guarded by fierce-looking tribal sculptures from Borneo, standing among the trees. Approaching the house, the most colorful item you see, however, is the artist's van, Sugar Donuts, which is covered with her bright colors and bold circle designs, along with her trademark logo. Pasita's studio is one of Singapore's famous black and white houses which were built by the British in the 1920s for their senior officials. As you can imagine from the hanging mirrors, Pasita completely customized the traditional house with an ethnic flair. To start with, she transformed the carport into an elegant outdoor dining area complete with rugs and paintings. To the left, the veranda overlooking the garden was Pasita's favorite spot to read. The entrance to the artist's studio home gives the visitor a glimpse of what is waiting inside. A veritable scene out of the Arabian Nights with boldly painted green, purple, and blue walls, hanging lamps, tribal rugs, surrounded by Pasita's colorful paintings. On the windows, the artist attached her Gamaria paintings that she made while traveling in Yemen. Pasita also painted the Balinese hanging sequin lampshades that suspend from the ceiling. Greeting visitors at the entranceway are a collection of Wayang shadow puppets from Indonesia. These puppets were the inspiration for Pasita's Wayang series of paintings, which she completed while living for seven years in Jakarta. As you enter the living room, your eyes do not know where to focus, as the colors are everywhere you look. However, you can't miss Simba, the most colorful lion in the world that Pasita painted in 2004. Pasita loved using ethnic textiles in her house, her clothes, as well as in her paintings. And you can see the use of ikat, batik, tanalak, and kalims, which she blended together with her rugs and paintings. The artist was inseparable from her art, 
and even painted her pants with an African mud cloth design from Mali. A prominent place in the living room is reserved for Basita's self-portrait, a large handmade paper sculpture that she made at the Singapore Tyler Print Institute. Peeking into the dining room, you can see the ceramic plates that Basita designed in Indonesia. Basita covered all of her dining room cabinets with batik fabric. She loved to entertain people and the house was always filled with friends and visitors from the far corners of the globe. This is part of the 144 piece limited edition Wayang dinnerware set that Basita individually hand painted. Another dinnerware set that she painted, including 13 different batik designs from villages in Java. Basita was in love with batik cloth, and in one of her series she collaged it with her colors, as shown in her painting, Hay Sugar. Heading up the stairs to the second floor, one has to pause to look at the paintings. At the top of the stairs, you are greeted by two fierce looking wooden sculptures from Kalimantan and a large collage textile installation painted by Pasita. The second floor is even more exotic with the mixture of Pasita's paintings and wall hangings with rugs, textiles and tribal sculptures. In the center of the room is a low six foot square table displaying some of Pasita's hand-painted glass plates. Pasita made her 82 brightly colored glass plates during her artist residence at the Linchamar Glass Factory in southern Sweden in 2001. Colorful objects fill the room, including a collection of Asmat sculptures that the artist brought from Irian Jaya. Pasita loved to be surrounded by tribal art, textiles, and sculpture. Even the walls of her bedroom are covered with her paintings and the various tribal friends from Papua New Guinea and Arian Jaya. Pasita's paintings are part of her Mask and Spirit series, which she did over a 20 year period based on her travels in Asia, Africa and South America. The passageway walls from the artist's bedroom are covered with large paintings of the Australian outback. Sita even changed the door to her toilet and replaced it using photographs and images of her paintings. Hanging on the door to the guest room is a poster that Sita painted for her exhibition, Door to Life. The guest room overflows with textiles and colors from India, Indonesia and the Philippines and most visitors find it hard to leave. The most important room in the house, however, is Pasita's studio and this is where she creates her vibrant canvases. Even her paint stand is brightly decorated. Pasita loved to paint large canvases until she became too sick to do such work. At that point, she switched and concentrated on collage painted colored circles onto her canvases and embellishing them with a variety of buttons, glitter and fabric. Pasita painted in her studio right up to the days that she finally had to enter the hospital, where she died of cancer a short while later. A few months before she died, however, she painted a 55 meter bridge in Singapore as a lasting legacy. She called it her gift to the people of Singapore. Sita Ba's prolific art career came to an end in 2004, but her spirit and her legacy live on through her paintings and the Basita Abad Center for the Arts.